Hey everybody, Joe here from Avalon and welcome to part two of our two part series on how Canadian taxes work. In this video, I'm going to dive into our taxation for corporations. I would like to invite you all to come along with me on a journey. I'll explain the important tax concepts you need to know about when running a business through a corporation in Canada. We'll look at how corporations are taxed, the tax benefits of incorporating your business, how to pay yourself from your corporation, common pitfalls that we see for corporate businesses, and some disadvantages of incorporating your business. So all that and nothing else coming right up. Now, I know taxes might not be the most exciting topic for everybody, but trust me, when it comes to your hard-earned money, understanding how taxes work is essential. That's why we're focusing on corporate taxes and how they impact small business owners like you. To make things more relatable, let me introduce you to Pam. Ah, this is our receptionist, Pam. Pam! 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 So Pam is a talented artist who has been self-employed for a while now. Lately, her business has been growing and she's considering incorporating. Throughout our discussion, we'll use Pam's journey as an example to help explain various aspects of corporate taxes in Canada. So grab your favorite caffeinated beverage and let's dive into the world of corporate taxes together. All right, let's kick things off with understanding the concept of a corporation in Canada. When you incorporate your business, you're creating a separate legal entity. It's kind of like your business becoming its own person. This new person has its own rights, obligations, and of course, pays taxes separately from you, the owner. One of the key benefits of this separation is limited liability. In simple terms, this means that if your corporation faces financial or legal issues, your personal assets like your house and car are generally protected. Sounds pretty good. Sounds great. I just think it's great. Now, if Pam incorporated and was sued for painting slanderous images, her personal assets would likely be protected. Not that she would ever do that. Next, I'll talk about the concept of integration in Canadian tax. Integration is a fancy term for making sure that business income is taxed fairly, whether it's earned in a corporation or by an individual. The idea is to ensure that at the end of the day, the total tax paid on corporate and personal income is roughly the same. Think of it like a balancing act between corporate and personal taxes. It exists to ensure that no one is unfairly burdened or has an unfair advantage. So then if it's all fair and there aren't supposed to be any tax advantages, you might be wondering what are the benefits to incorporating in Canada? I don't know. I don't know. Firstly, it comes down to tax timing. We have lower tax rates for small businesses. In Canada, small business corporations enjoy a reduced tax rate on their active business income, which means more money stays in the business for growth and investment. This could be a game changer for someone like Pam, whose art business is expanding. The lower corporate tax rate means you get to keep more of your money for longer by deferring tax. Pam could leave profits in the corporation instead of withdrawing that cash. The funds would then be subject to the lower corporate tax rates until she eventually wanted to take the money out personally. She can then strategically withdraw money when it's most tax efficient for her to do so. It's like having a little more control over your tax destiny. I control my destiny. Another fantastic benefit is the Lifetime Capital Gains Exemption, or LCGE for short. When it's time to sell your shares in your small business corporation, you could be eligible for an exemption on a portion of the taxable gains. That exemption is nothing to sneeze at either. Pam could sell her corporate shares at a gain of nearly $1 million before paying any tax at all. Pretty good. That means more money in her pocket when she decides to sell her successful art business. Picture finding Mary Swanson's briefcase and not having to drive to Aspen to give all that money back. That's kind of like the LCG. Sl slippy, slappy, slimmin, salmon, salmon, swan, swanson, swanson? Maybe send the briefcase. Look on the... Oh, yeah! It's right here. Samsonite. I was way off. There are some specific criteria that you'll need to meet for the lifetime capital gains exemption to apply but it can apply to the more majority of incorporated small business owners in Canada. Check out the link in the description below for more info on how to qualify for the lifetime capital gains exemption. Now that we've covered the basics and some benefits of incorporating, let's dive deeper into how active business income is taxed inside a corporation in Canada. Active business income refers to the income generated for your business's day-to-day -day operations. For Pam, this would be income from selling her artwork. Um, you wanna buy it? Well, yeah. Yeah, we have to have it for the office. 
in Canada, there's a small business tax rate, which is lower than the general corporate tax rate. This small business tax rate is available to Canadian controlled private corporations or CCPCs. A CCPC is a type of private corporation in Canada that is owned and controlled by Canadian residents. In simpler terms, it's a company that is not publicly traded on a stock exchange and the majority of its shares are held by Canadians. It's also the type of company that Pam would likely be using. In 2023, this reduced corporate tax rate applies to the first $500,000 of that active business income that I just discussed. And that's $500,000 of net income. For Pam, Pam could sell a million dollars worth of her artwork, deduct $500,000 of expenses, and have $500,000 of net income. The lower small business rate would then be applied to her $500,000 of net income. So if Pam incorporates her art business, she could benefit from these lower tax rates and have more money to invest back in her business. It's kind of like you're giving her business a little boost just when it needs it. Yes, this is business. The, uh, the business of team building and morale boosting. Next up, let's discuss how investment income is taxed inside a corporation. Investment income is the income earned from things like interest, dividends, or capital gains on investments held by your corporation. If Pam's art business is doing well and she has some extra cash, she might decide to invest in stocks or bonds through her corporation. The tax treatment of investment income inside a corporation is a bit different from active business income. Generally, investment income is taxed at a higher rate. However, a portion of the taxes paid on investment income can be refunded when the corporation distributes the income as dividends to the shareholders. This way, the concept of integration that we discussed earlier still applies. This video doesn't go into much detail on investment income, but check out the corporate tax rates linked in the description below for more info on investment income tax rates. Now let's talk about how to pay yourself from your corporation. You have a few options here, taking salary, receiving dividends, or a combination of both. If you choose to pay yourself a salary, your corporation gets a tax deduction for the amount paid and you pay personal income tax on that salary. This option could be helpful for Pam if she needs a consistent income or wants to contribute to her RSP. This could help Pam save for retirement or qualify for a mortgage. Because I have a mortgage now, gotta bring home the bucks. On the other hand, if Pam decides to pay herself through dividends, she won't get a tax deduction in her corporation. However, dividends are taxed at a lower rate on her personal tax return due to the dividend tax credit. In some scenarios, dividends can be more tax efficient, but keep in mind, they don't count as earned income for RRSP purposes. Now that just means that they won't increase your RRSP contribution room like paying yourself wages does. It's all about finding the right balance for your individual needs. In Pam's case, she might want to consider a mix of salary and dividends depending on her personal financial goals and tax situation. We have a thorough video on paying yourself from your corporation Again, linked in the description below. We talk about the pros and cons of salary and dividends and show how easy, how to easily compare taxes owing under each option. It's a good one, so don't skip this topic if it's relevant for you. All right, so that's enough of the positive stuff. Let's get into the negative stuff. And it pains me to see all of the negativity festering. First up on the negative side, I'll touch on a few disadvantages of running your business through a corporation. One downside is the increased administration and compliance costs. Incorporating means additional paperwork, annual financial statements, and corporate tax returns. These added costs and responsibilities can take up quite a bit of time for the owner. Additionally, incorporating could mean losing out on certain personal tax credits, and some credits are only available to individuals and not corporations. Check out our video on how personal taxes work in Canada for all the details on tax credits and deductions available to individuals. Another disadvantage is that losses can sometimes be more difficult to take advantage of in a corporation. It's not uncommon for startup businesses to incur losses at first. So when you operate your proprietorship and incur a loss, you can deduct that loss against your other personal income. If you're operating that same business through a corporation, the loss could not be applied to your, through your personal income. Instead, the loss can only be applied to another year's corporate tax return to reduce tax within the company only. So if Pam ended up sustaining losses in the company, it would be more difficult for her to use them to reduce her taxes than a self-employed person. Now that we've looked at both advantages and disadvantages, we should briefly touch on some potential pitfalls when running a business as a corporation. This way you'll be prepared if you decide to incorporate your business. First up, inadequate tax planning can lead to unpleasant surprises. It's essential to stay on top of your tax obligations and work with a tax professional to optimize your situation. 
it can be easy to take dividends from your company and forget that you will have to pay personal income tax on those dividends. That's a common scenario that, that can lead to a surprise personal tax bill in April. Pam will want to plan ahead to avoid spending the money that she may actually need later to go towards her personal tax bill. Next, be aware of passive income limits. Earning too much investment income inside your corporation could lead to a loss of the small business tax rate, which we discussed earlier. Pam and anyone else in this scenario would need to be mindful of their corporation's investment income to avoid this issue. Finally, it helps to avoid using corporate assets for personal use as this can result in additional taxes and complications. For example, if Pam's corporation buys her a car for personal use, she might face a taxable benefit that needs to be reported on her personal tax return. For more details on personal use of corporate vehicle, check out our video on corporate cars linked in the description below. It's essential to weigh these negative factors against the benefits of incorporating to make an informed decision. So what does all this mean for Pam and her decision to incorporate? Well, incorporating could provide Pam with limited liability protection from potential art-related disasters. Incorporating can provide lower tax rates on her active business income and the ability to strategically plan her personal income. However, she must also consider the potential pitfalls, increased administrative costs, and the loss of personal tax credits. Each business owner's situation is unique, and it's a good idea to chat with a tax professional when making the final decision to incorporate. All right, so that's it for this video on corporate taxes in Canada. I hope you found this useful and maybe even a little bit interesting. We love helping small business owners and creating these videos is just one way that we do that. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really motivates us to put out more useful content. And if you want to hear from more, more from me personally, I send out a mostly weekly newsletter about building a business here in Canada. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.